Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of all of the watercolors that I own. You guys had specifically asked for this when I was doing my studio tour, so here it is. I've got a lot of things to show you today, so this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual. I hope you guys don't mind. And in a few minutes, it's actually going to start to be a bit more of a casual setting. I'm doing a voiceover for this first portion, but we're soon going to be switching to the audio from when I was actually recording this and my kids were running in and out and asking me questions. So just, it's going to be a bit more casual and a bit different. This first palette that I have to show to you is one of my oldest ones, and this is where I keep my Shinhan watercolors. I will leave links to as many of these products down in the description as I can. And I've had this one for a really long time. I kind of first dipped my toes into watercolors with a set like this one, this and other sets, and I really like it. They're more opaque than some of the other watercolors, but I had a lot of fun working with them, especially when I was layering like a brush pen or something like that on top of these colors. And I think this is like a 30 color set, something similar to that. I've really enjoyed working with these ones. This palette here is one of those Magello Fusion palettes, so it has like that seal so it doesn't leak, things like that. And on the back, this is actually where I used to mix gouache. So before I had my porcelain trays, I mixed gouache on here. It has another little tray, and in here, I used to keep my Daniel Smith watercolors in there. And now that I've taken them out and moved them into a different palette, which you'll see later, I actually put my Decadent Pie paints in here, that Prima Marketing set, and that's because I wanted to use that tin for something else. So I took those half pans out and I've just been keeping them in here so that they don't get dusty. Maybe they'll have a new home eventually, but this is where they're living right now. And these stickers are by Danica Sills and Sketching Scarlet. These are the palettes that were sent to me by Otokano, who sent me all of these amazing Holbein paints. And it was so incredibly generous of her to send these paints to me. She sent me very generous samples of each of them. And I it's just super kind of her. Well, zoom in, zoom in close so you can see this little palette. This one was a gift from Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. We got together, I think this was the first time we met, she, yeah, the first time we met she gave this to me. And this has the Mgram Southwest Desert, is that what it's called? Southwest Desert set? Desert South Southwest set of paints in it and uh, by M. Graham. Did I say that? Yeah, I said that. And she decorated the top of the tin for me and these are really cute. I like M. Graham paints, so it's nice that she made this and put this together for me. The next palette I have to show you is this large one that I made for my Sennelier video, that DIY palette that I made. And this one also has a couple colors that I've taken out of it because um, I have either sent, like made little kits to send half pans to other people um, because I have the tubes so I can always make more or I move the paints to somewhere else. But most of them I took out to give to um, someone else. I also took out the tray that was over here. I <laughs> I really liked putting this together and it was a lot of fun and I did use it some, but, um, and I do still come back to this palette sometimes, but it's easier when I have a few colors in a smaller palette, but this was a mega fun project and um, I have very fond memories of having done that as well. And more stickers. If you want to see whose stickers these are, I linked them in my DIY palette video, which I will link the video so you can find the links to the stickers. This smaller guy is my portable painter palette. And I've had this one for a while. This was actually the very first time I got any Daniel Smith paints. I put them in this palette. So that's what's in here are like my first Daniel Smith colors for the most part. There was a good period of time where these were the only paints that I used. Um, these are kind of, I would say that this is the palette that I really learned watercolors on. Like, I, I started watercolors with other ones, but these, this is, this is the palette I was using when I felt like I was really starting to make progress with watercolors and really starting to understand them a bit more. 
So um, I've used this one quite a lot and it comes with me like when I travel like this is a good set for me to bring because it has like paints that I really enjoy in it and I like these water buckets because I prefer to use real brushes when I um, when I even when I travel as opposed to water brushes I'd like to get more comfortable with water brushes but I just haven't gotten there yet this little one you may recognize, but this is actually a different one. This is the Winsor & Newton Cotman set, and I just got this one. Oh, hi guys, what you doing? What you doing up there? Um, I actually just received this set as a gift from another YouTuber. She and I are actually working on like a collab project right now where we have sent each other some art supplies, and oh gosh, we are working on that currently, so... Oh boy, oh, that that's coming in the future. Was that here? This was probably there. This was down there. Okay, yep. So this is actually a little bit different than the Cotman set I received or that I purchased before. The color range has varied just slightly and I think is actually a little bit better now. So there's that. And I'm, I'm actually looking forward to playing with these again. Okay, so the next set I will show you is this one here. I'm going to be really inconsistent with like naming these stickers, so I apologize. Uh, this one's Denise from In Liquid Color. This one's Reina, who's Illustrina here on YouTube. And this is Mateus Urbanoix, something similar to that. And um, he has YouTube. The, all these people have YouTube channels. They're all great. Yep, all I like. I like them all. Okay. And this metal palette is where I have put my... Holbein colors. Um, the ones that I pulled out of the set from Odo, I put them in here, and I like these colors. I like this set. I like these paints. <laughs> yep. Okay, there's more paints in the thing. So these three palettes here are all the same palette. Um, but they have different paints in them, so I want to talk to you about them. Of course, there's more stickers. I love 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 to put stickers on my watercolor palettes it's very very fun so real quick i guess i'll tell you these three are sketching scarlet more matea stickers lowish um my friend um um i don't i don't know she doesn't use her first name a ton on the internet does she anyway she's x rainy x 13 on youtube and i got her sticker set like her farm animals, that's great. This is a Dragon Age sticker I got on Redbubble. I don't remember who makes this. And this, um, another artist, Shiro, on Instagram. I ordered like her art book and the sticker came with that. So these are all those palettes. Let me show you what's actually in them. This one is where I keep my gouache. So, at least my dried gouache. I kind of go back and forth between using my gouache out of tubes and this dried palette. It depends. This palette, these paints are actually pretty dry now because I haven't used them super regularly. Um, when I'm using gouache more often and coming back to this palette, they tend to stay a bit more moist when I keep the lid closed. Uh, these paints are by a few different brands. The top row is pretty much all Holbein up top. And then I have some M. Graham gouache, uh, Royal Talons. Um, is that all? Yep. Yep, that's pretty much it. So this is where I keep my dried gouache, and it stays pretty well in here as long as I keep the lid closed and don't shake it. But I mean, even if I shake this, only that little bit of green moves around currently. But this is where I keep dried gouache. This one here, I keep M. Graham paints in, I think. Let me check. Yep, these are M. Graham paints. And uh, these are various M. Graham colors from a couple different sets and a couple individual tubes where I wanted the specific color, so I got the specific color. I like to organize my paints by brand mostly, and it helps me to keep consistent because some of the paints are some paints are like way more vibrant than others, and some you know are they just react differently. So sometimes I like to keep them separate. Sometimes. So there's that. And then this last little palette is where I keep my smaller set of Sennelier paints. So 
These are all Sennelier paints, and I again, I picked out 12 specific colors and put them all in here like this. When it comes to like these plastic wells versus half pans, I prefer these wells. I like the size of them. They work better with my calligraphy brushes, and um, I don't know. I just like getting paint out of these more than getting paint out of a half pan. I mean, half pans are fine, and I use them a lot, but I like these, the wells like this. This little one is my Fine Tech metallic set of paints. This is the gold set and these little pans can come off. These are a lot of fun. These are my favorite metallic paints, although I actually haven't tried a ton of metallic paints. Okay, so this is the tin that my Decadent Pies paints were in, but I took them out put them in that first palette you saw and these are my schminka paints I got the the 12 pan set um, the 12 half pan set this was one of the first one of the earliest brands of watercolor that I got and I don't use them a ton but I've been liking them more lately I feel like when I was first getting started and I didn't really know how to use watercolors these paints really kind of intimidated me because I didn't know how to control the vibrancy as much and the saturation of the color but uh, now that I have like a finer hand with watercolors. I like these paints a lot more and I have been using them a bit more often. So it's nice for me to have them in this smaller container. And the reason that I put them in the smaller container is because oh, I'm using the large container for something else now. And I haven't shown you guys these paints yet because I want to review them and I've been using them so that I can do that. Um, I have um, uh, White Knight's paints in here now. So I recently got these, I ordered them online and they took a long time to get here, like three months or something. I'll have to check and see. Yeah, I think it was three months because I ordered them in March and they came in June. So, uh, yep, I have used them a couple times, but I can't speak for them quite yet. Uh, but I will be doing a review for the White Knights paints soon. I don't have any stickers on here. That seems wrong. I should, I should put some kind of sticker on here. I don't really have like smaller stickers that would fit on here very well. Maybe that's why there aren't any, because it's, it's a little, okay. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. This old metal tin has Prang watercolors in it and I have a video of these. This is a super old tin that I found at my secondhand shop. I found these at our local, like antique shop and they were really fun to use. I was really happy to find them and it's it's just a really neat thing to have found these super old paints. To be honest, I haven't actually used them since I made that video, but uh, that's okay. I like them, they're fun. Maybe someday when my daughter's a little bit older, I can let her have these. She's still pretty messy with watercolors, so she just uses like the little Crayola sets that you get for kids. I also have two plastic palettes like this. And this one, this art is by Kara McGee and this is Cassiopeia on Instagram. And uh, I really like Dragon Age, in case you guys haven't noticed like my other Dragon Age stickers. I'm a huge fan of that game series. They're my favorite my very most favorite games. Okay, so let's talk about this one first. This is like my custom palette that I made and I've talked about this one in a previous video. And this is, is this the only, I think this might be the only palette I have that has multiple brands of paint in it. Um, so there's Sennelier paints in here and M. Graham, Daniel Smith. Boop. I think that's it. Um. Yeah, Sennelier, Daniel Smith, M. Graham. I think that's what's in here. Various colors, I put these together, made this little palette. Some of these, like especially the M. Graham paints, are like really tacky still. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is fun. I like this. I found that like each palette feels different to use, even if the colors are very similar. Oh, look at that, I got paint on me. Look at it. Focus. You could do it. Come on. Show them the paint. That's uh, the M. Graham paint that I touched. Just got right, right on there. 
This one has used to be for this one used to be for specific colors and now it's just kind of another like catch-all palette where when I take things out of somewhere I put them in here. So these little half pans of mostly Daniel Smith paint these used to be in half pans but I think I wanted to use the half pans for something else. So I took these paints out and put them in here. I'll probably use them like for my larger Daniel Smith palette when those empty and I run out of space, I can put these in there. Uh, I don't really know what some of these are. These are, some of these are actually Magello Mission Gold paints and I don't have them anymore, my Magello paints. I sold them to a friend. And uh, so these are like my last remnants of some of my Magello colors, which I've totally forgot. That's really interesting. Okay, so I think we're through all of my palettes now, and I mostly just have like some tube paints to show you. So in this like tea box, I have, these are the super old paints. So these are ones that are like old Winsor and Newton paints and like ones that just say Winsor and Newton. So I'm assuming like the artist quality ones and then the student quality, their Cotman set as well. Um, there's some of both in here. There's like some old like speedball paints in here. These are ones that I inherited from my father-in-law from when he used to do watercolors like a couple decades ago. And these paints actually do, there are some out on a palette and I still have that palette and I can show it to you. So when my father-in-law painted in watercolors, this is the palette that he used. And hopefully you guys can see kind of how large this is with my hands and stuff like that. Like here's, just for size comparison, here's one of those little, or one of those relatively large plastic palettes. So you can see that this thing is pretty big. And it makes me really happy to get to look back on this one. It's like super used and it makes me so happy. It's like so pretty and it, it's like has this is Windsor and mostly Windsor and Newton paints um and some like speedball paints some of them are like really empty and some of them are more full I have used this palette a few times but not a ton especially recently um but I'm really happy that it still exists my daughter actually plays with this one sometimes We are almost to the end now, and this is um, an old cigar box. This is where I keep my two paints. So inside of here I have two paints from various brands like Daniel Smith and uh, Core, which I need to review these for you, it's coming, and um, Shinhan, M. Graham. There's a couple Windsor and Newton tubes in here. But this is where I keep my two paints. So the palettes that you've seen, like the plastic palettes where the paints are squeezed out of tubes, this is where they come from. And this is, I keep all of my tube colors in here. I don't know how many tubes there are in here. It, here, let me just, let me just. So, I'm sure you guys would assume this, but I didn't get all of this paint that I own at one time. It's all kind of been accumulated over the past couple of years. Most of it, some of it, you know, is older than that. But, um, yep, these, these are my tube paints. So when I make a palette and they come out of tubes, they come from here. Yeah, this was definitely a good idea. I. Don't regret pouring these out at all. This isn't paint, but this is my tea. This is random, but uh, I have tea with me because I really love tea. Oh, here's um, one more little palette that I was sitting off to the side and I almost forgot about. This is just my Hushwing palette. So you guys have seen this one before in a recent video. I reviewed these paints and um, here they are. I love this box. It's so cute. Well, I can hold on to it if you want. Yeah. Okay. 
but you gotta come see how our room looks. Well, it will look amazing. Well, keep going, because I'm almost done. I only have a couple more things, so you better finish up. <laughs> Go close that door. I've just been delivered this toy dinosaur by my children, and uh, apparently I have to uh, hold on to this, so you can just you hang out right there. Which is going to be kind of difficult, because the next set I have to show you is very large. Okay, I'm zoomed out all the way. Excuse me, little buddy. This is my Sennelier set. Um, you guys have probably seen this one before. Uh, this was a reward, a kind of a gift to myself for having reached some personal goals at the beginning of the year. And I have been pulling this paint out and using these tubes for a while. So here's all of my Sennelier colors. This is all of the colors that Sennelier makes in watercolors, with the exception of Opera Rose, which is no longer in production. And some people have it, some people have that tube. I don't have it anymore, or I don't have it at all, never had it. And uh, But I do have this big set, and these paints smell like candy. They smell really nice, actually. You don't even know I could fix it. All I had to do was put I that on. I, there was some little holes on this side and some holes on this side, so I had to focus and put the pens in the hole. Well, good job. You it's very it. good. You did it! And this lid has since detached from the whole set, but it's still great. I can still put it on here and close it from the other end. The last thing I have to show you is also large. This is where I keep my Daniel Smith paints currently in this set here. This is a large palette. This is like the American Journey porcelain palette. I think it's like 33 wells or something like that. I have most of them filled, but not all of them. And yep, this is where I keep my Daniel Smith paints currently. I really like mixing on porcelain. It's like my favorite mixing surface. So I do get this out pretty regularly and I enjoy this is my favorite brand of watercolors currently. Um, there is one of the new paints that I've gotten is potentially disputing that position, believe it or not. And um, I will be talking to you guys about that soon. It's de There's definitely a new addition to my top three favorites and somebody's getting bumped out of that category. So dun dun dun, we'll talk about that. When I review the paints, which I will get to, I will definitely get to it. So obviously nobody needs this many watercolors. That's a quick disclaimer. You could do as much with one of most of any of these sets as I have done with all of them. You don't need them all. Um, I have them all because I enjoy trying various kinds of watercolors. I find that to be a lot of fun. And also these are a lot of these have been a business expense for me. So I review them for you here on the channel. I've given a lot of paints away. There are some brands of watercolors that I used to have that I don't have anymore because I gave them away to people. And um, I just enjoy watercolors as a hobby. So it's been fun for me to try new things. Please don't feel that like if you don't have this many paints that that somehow reflects negatively on you because it obviously doesn't. But thank you guys for so much for watching this video. Let me know what you've tried and what you haven't tried and what you'd like to try or if there's something here that I haven't shown you guys that you would like to see, just let me know. And thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you've enjoyed this more casual sort of video and I will see you all on Thursday for an, ooh, an announcement. Oh yeah, we have an announcement on Thursday. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Mom, oh. the part of my robot! The part of your robot! And it's oh no, your robot has no head! Where did it go? Do you know how to get it? Yeah, can you, you get can it? help me. I can help you. I need to help you get the head for your robot. Let's go!